I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. I did a few crazy things recently. Okay, elaborate. Outside of, outside of me freaking out about Tigatron before we start recording. Yes, outside of that, which I did screenshot and tweet. I saw it. Not, not at peak freakout, because I was like, oh, where's the button for screenshot? But I did oh, no, capture no. I, some of it. Brandon, I have already responded to your tweet. You should know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah. So, in addition to freaking out about Tigatron, um, yes. I paid the scalper's price for oh. some Minicon, some ma- Micromasters. Oh. I bought, um, yes. uh, what is this? Jeez, I don't even remember his name. Surefire and Double Punch or something mm-hmm. like that. He's like a he's a minicon combiner and I love him. Oh, dope. He- but the big one that I bought and the reason that I ended up paying almost $50 for these MicroMasters <laughs> uh is they did a rat bat and rumble for uh, um, okay. for what is it? Siege? Yeah, mm-hmm. Siege. Um and I got the rat bat here. Nice. And I, love him. I like. He's gorgeous. Uh, and I also got Rumble, who's the uh, the like Brooklyn accent talking dude who's red. I don't care. There's a whole thing in the Transformers fandom: is Rumble red or, or, is, or is Frenzy red? Rumble's red. So shut up. <laughs> um, I got Yellow him too. And he's, John has spoken. He, Ooh, I've spoken. I like him. He's really good. Uh, yeah. The cool thing about them is they have, like, he has, like, these little ports on his hands. Mm -hmm. And because Siege has this, like, gimmick where they can kind of, like, combine with everything, he can, like, have, like, a a fire blast on his hand. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to getting my 3D printer working again because I'm going to print pile drivers for him. Oh, okay. That'd be cool. (laughs) But I don't... I. Well, actually, I had to get my 3D printer working for a different reason, and that's because I discovered a new game. Is that okay? Is this the game that you texted me about last night? Uh, yes. This is the yes. game I texted you about last night. Not the game that I am currently working on. It yes. is not anywhere near ready. Uh, I do have a, I do, I do have a first draft of the rules. I still need to figure out one thing, but okay. it's almost play testable, and I yeah. do want to try play testing it. Um, before I release the rules to anyone. Because mm-hmm. I think my intention is once I hit a certain point, I was going to post the rules on the Patreon page. If anyone wants to take a look at that, anyone who's a patron. Um, yeah, nice. But for right now, I'm still working on uh, making it at all fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that'd be that'd be good to do. That That's an important part of um, gaming. Games. Yeah, yeah. Games should be fun. Yeah, they should be. That, uh, that's a big portion of them. Basically, it's Dungeon Dice Monsters with a, a deck of cards. Which sounds cool. Like, cool yeah. as hell. Like, so, something that's already r- readily available to the general not, public. Re- oh, oh, Dungeon Dice Monsters is not readily available. No, no, available. I, mean, I mean a deck of cards. So there's one oh, yeah. aspect of the game that mm-hmm. where someone could purchase the game. There's parts that aren't included, but they yeah. probably have or might have to buy because they have it. But there's, like, two cards missing. I, I kind of the way I wanted to do it is more or less print on demand once I yeah. finish it, because like most of the stuff is printable, like the hex pieces are printable, yeah. the cards are printable, and you can kind of WYSIWYG your um, your miniatures as mm-hmm. as you need fit. So, but we're not gonna, I'm not going to talk about that anymore because it's nowhere near done. Um, <laughs> no, it looked cool. What I saw and what I heard so far looks cool though. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to bring it over to your house, and we're gonna have to yes. use. We're gonna have to use your game table. We to play a to, game. I just started popping out my um, uh, Baldur's Gate uh, pieces and trying to get that oh. stuff set up. <laughs> yes. Like I, I have yes. to organize that. Life's been a little bit crazy, so uh, I started. Didn't get to complete that. Um, next week is a little bit busy for me because that's my birthday, and we're going away to uh, oh, medieval yeah. times. 
and then it's also Valentine's Day, and also there's um, stuff with the family we gotta. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do Didn't say no more. But then the week after that, I want to see if I can't get some peoples together. Oh, you, know, like you me, Lisa, Erica, uh, Allison, uh, or, or what have you, breaking uh, the tables. Maybe some Baldur's Gate. Maybe some whatever else is floating around. All right, all right. Sounds good to me. There's and uh, in other news, yep. I. Finally went to the doctors about the old sleep apneas, and yeah. uh, they were like, oh, sleep study, sleep doctor. I was like, no, I, I have anxiety. No, that won't work. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so she went to talk to somebody, and it just happened that the sleep supply guy from one of the local hospitals was around. She spoke to him. So they shipped me an at-home at sleep apnea thing that I used for the last three nights. Yep. And on paper, that's perfect. Now, yeah. here's the thing I didn't realize. That, one, I have to sleep on my back, which is something I don't do because that's how I just stop breathing for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the whole the whole sleep apnea thing. Yeah, the whole sleep, that, that, that problem. The whole, the, whole thing, the whole thing that you're testing for. Yeah, and then they give you this little thing that you put on your finger and it reads, like, blood oxygen and pulse and all yep, that. Yep, yep. That falls off. So, night one, that's a wash. So, I did, yep, did yep. a couple extra nights. Duct tape that shit to my finger. And then the little, the, the <laughs> you little would duct tape it to your finger. Yeah, well, I don't want it to fall off to, and waste more time. And then yeah. the little tubey bits that run to your face, so you have to stand your back anyway because if you lean on your your head on the side, you, you squish yeah. the tube, and then the little light turns red, and then you're like, oh, now this one's a wash. So I did that, but something they didn't put in the pamphlet was uh, kitty cats. So I <laughs> to protect that from cats because <laughs> they like to chew on tubes and wires. And lay on my chest no. where, where the little strappy thing goes with all the buttons on it. So oh, like, no. I'm trying to sleep in a position I'd never sleep in with all stuff hooked up to me. And, like, half asleep just push cats away from me <laughs> at the same time. Well, you see, the thing with cats are the second that you're in a position that is abnormal for you, that's the moment that they're mm. like, I'm sitting on that. Yeah. I'm oh, coming yeah. for that, and I'm sitting on that chest. Yeah. So the, a, lot, a lot of the night was um, me, or Erica waking up because she felt me trying to, to push cats off of me. <laughs> <laughs> and she'll just, like, roll over, grab the cat, and then roll back over. <laughs> just like, oh, no, God. I'll leave him alone. And then the other half of the night was nights were her rolling over and, like, shaking me to make me start breathing again <laughs> fun yeah super fun that's so a, that's we'll a, see how that went that, uh, that's a fun one yeah yeah i don't know how uh, su successful they were because the little light is supposed to be green and it was red but i was like after three nights now i have to ship that back because yeah. otherwise they'll bill me yeah and that's no fun the, yeah the worst part with those things is like the worst part with sleep the worst part of sleep studies in general is no matter how you do a sleep study, it's not good for you because it's not it's not how you normally sleep. Yeah, it's never it's never accurate to your actual sleeping pattern ever. No. Well, I uh, the nice thing about it being at home is I could keep my standard sleep schedule, sleep mm -hmm. in the same t general environment, sans yeah. machinery and cats with this new thing to play with. Yeah. So it does take away some of the anxiety. Yeah, yeah. That's that's good. That's good though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll, um, we'll we'll see what comes of it. Yeah. You know, um there's a part of me that wants to do a sleep study just so I can have the numbers. Like yeah. I would literally I would literally if I got a sleep study done, I'd be sa I'd say, "Hey, can I have those data points?" Yeah, you can just do that for yeah. go to your GP, talk about it. I can tell them the name of the company to talk mm -hmm. to cuz you go to your GP, they fill out paperwork. That other company deals with your insurance, and it's just free. I think it, the, the highest cost is thirty six dollars. Does that make me have a copay? Does that make me um, just like the worst kind of nerd that I want to take no. my sleep study results and do analytics on them? No, not at all. I just got blood work done because I was like, wonder what my numbers are. <laughs> I I haven't been to the doctor in a while. Uh, I, yeah, I, I need a new general practitioner because there's, mine went to a company I hate. Oh, yeah. There's I like mine; they're good. I did have to 
same building, same mm-hmm. family, different general practitioner. Because I didn't go uh, to the doctor for so long, they they were like, mm, "You're no longer a patient." And I was like, "Ah, shit." <sighs> yeah, that happens. I I actually hadn't gone to my previous GP for a while, yeah. and I went there when he was not there, mm-hmm. and I saw another doctor, and they were like, "You're just starting a you're just starting your relationship with so and so." Blah 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 blah. I'm not gonna blah 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 blah. Um, long story short, I was trying to get something to help me. I was trying to get something because I was in a crisis period of my life mm-hmm. and I couldn't sleep anymore. And that just made it even worse. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, but the, the, the fact of the matter is because I'm, they recently switched on paper. It looked like I had never been there before, yeah. but I had been there previously when they were the old institution. So yeah. Yeah, I don't know if if someone puts a finger up their butt, uh, I think they're close. Just as a or as a rule. Wait, I don't understand that turn of phrase. If a doctor puts his finger up your butt, oh, if a doctor puts your finger, I thought you were talking butt, about an individual inserting a digit into their own anus. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, this oh, changes no, no. things. This, if, this if changes somebody, things. If somebody sticks a finger up your butthole. Somebody that's not you inserts a finger not that's you. not yours into your own beehole. Yes, that that is a point. That is a point where your relationship has changed, and it can never that change is. back. It can never change back. I have not had the uh, that experience yet. It was it was just because of a particular set of circumstances that I needed something investigated, and that was the best way to investigate it. Were were, <laughs> were you in a Basically, doctor's office? Was there a yes. pill involved? No, no. I was okay. I was in the doctor's office. Okay. I was in the doctor's office. I was not. It was not in the back alley behind some place in Newport. You didn't get roofied at, roofied at Snappers, did you? No, 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 okay. no, no, no. Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so, and he's drinking water. Yeah, I should probably not drink water while I'm about to say something. Oh no, I'm just filling airtime, but I didn't really have anything to add at the moment. That's fair. The um so I'm kind of obsessed with wargaming right now. I can tell. Um you sent me a Hot Wheels war game you're working dude, on a Gaslands is legit, okay? Mm-hmm. It's super legit. Also, did you know that Hot Wheels are still only 90, 97 cents? What? Yeah. They're I just five, untouched by inflation. They're just I untouched. I got 5 Hot Wheels. Yesterday. Oh, no. <laughs> like, I never thought I was going to buy a Hot Wheel again, mm-hmm. but I bought five, Shoot. and they're still really good. And I got, like, a Honda CR, uh, a, a Honda Civic Type R, yeah. and it looks way better than a 99-cent Honda Civic yeah. has any right to look. That like, looks good. The, yeah. Uh, I was on Thingiverse the other day looking for, like, Valentine's Day stuff, which one just don't go to Thingiverse. There's no, I just do whatever Instagram recommends, and then you're Gucci. The uh, yeah, yep, yep. Thingiverse has a lot of Hot Wheels mods uh, that are printable. Yes. Well, I think I think some of it's because of gas lands, but Hot Wheels people, Hot Wheels folks are serious about Hot Wheels. Yes. Like, serious, dude. Mm-hmm. Just like, what? Yeah, I believe it. I, I, I'm just like, I've reached this point where nothing surprises Well. Everything surprises me, and nothing surprises me anymore. It's the weirdest. Ex- <laughs> it's the weirdest experience. But the cool thing about this Gaslands game is it's basically X Wing with cars. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's X Wing. It's twenty dollars to buy the book for it, mm-hmm. which I purchased. So if we play together, you don't need to buy it. I can just okay. lend you the PDF. Um, it's twenty dollars for the book. A dollar per car. It takes two cars to run your run a team. That's about fifty five cans, which is their unit of measurement. Mm-hmm. And you can just play a game. That's super. That's really good for a war game. That's yeah, really it's, good. It's super reasonably priced, and it's actually kind of cool. And it's Sounds way cool. yeah yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna paint these guys up at some point, nice. and then we're gonna play a game. The custom paint jobs. Yeah, I'm I'm I got. I'm pretty sure I'm going to do all of the Miyazaki colors because that's the team that I like the best, but we'll okay. see. We'll see. 
Nice. I might do some videos on it. I don't know. I'm not sure. Content. Content. Hashtag content. Hashtag content. This car is cool because it has a uh, Gatling gun in the the um, the place where you usually put uh, um, Gas. lights. Lights. Oh. Yeah, okay. yeah. It's got two Gatling guns. That's kind of cool. <clears throat> yeah. It's a lot like. It's a it. like. It's a lot like Death Race mixed with Mad Max. Like okay. if I was gonna give it, a, if I was gonna give it like a, uh, I like both level, of those things. Yeah, so I'm kind of stoked for it. And nice. What are the units of measure? Is it like ruler and oh, uh, mm. like the the rose coordinates, or is it like there's tiles? So the way it works is it's templates. Okay. So. In, I don't know. I, did I ever show you how to play? X-Wing, uh, yes. I did? Okay. Yeah, I think yeah. we played one game. Mm -hmm. um, so in X-Wing, you basically set your movement, and then you take a template and put it down in front of your vehicle, your your Star Wars vehicle, and then yeah. you do that. In Gaslands, you shift between gears, mm -hmm. and that affects which templates you can use. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. It's so it's like, it's free form. You just kind of, basically what you need to do is you have to set a gate for the starter. Mm-hmm two gates for the the first and second and then a finish gate so it's four okay. there's four lines on the field and then you yeah. can put up like obstacles like you know scatter terrain mm -hmm. and um you know maybe like jersey barriers or what have you and then the whole game is literally just get to the end nice. but everyone has weapons <laughs> <laughs> i like it that's the way racing should be but yeah i mean yeah. i think i would enjoy nascar a lot more if everyone oh. had a gun like, if they were covered in sensors, and everyone had, like, laser tag guns, but when you hit another car's sensor, it would disable parts of the car? No, no, actual guns. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, blood sport. Blood, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know what? Here's the thing that I've learned um, because of the way the world is. Mm -hmm. Everyone's always like... Oh, this movie could never happen. This is ridiculous. No, Mad Max would happen in a second if people were allowed to to Mad Max it. I mean, like <clears throat> idiocracy. <clears throat> basically, oh, I think I think I think idiocracy is way less likely than Mad Max. <laughs> oh yeah, that's possible. I can see I think, that. I think yeah. I think Mad Max is a a real yeah. threat for our future. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember the Thunderdome hack for uh, PUBG? Yes, I do, and I remember hating it mm -hmm. because and it would be like somebody would hack everyone into a single like tiny island. Yes, and yeah. put all the weapons and just whoever is last. Yeah, yeah it was good, and by good I mean awful because it ruins Terrible. a game. Because it'd be like staying alive forever, and then just like oh now you're in this thing, and all the effort you put in is just gone. But yep. yeah, yep, yep. Outside uh, of that, um. Welcome to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week, we'll take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the, of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John. And I'm moving the thing to the folder. Oh, wait, you know what? Before I move it to a folder, let me go. Maybe you should, maybe you should ask me what it, ask me ma about ma it. Maybe I should ask you to... Uh, to identify it. To identify it. Yeah, I should I should mm -hmm. do that in the proper I'm not, order. I'm looking I'm looking at a hilarious uh picture and apparently it was reposted in black and white and it's way worse and I'm not gonna say who the picture <gasps> What? Oh, oh, okay, okay, Brandon. What's uh, this? We're not gonna we might wanna cut this section out, but open that Twitter link. Let's see. Click. Click, right click. View profile? No, that's you. No, no, no. Okay. No, no. You gotta click the. I got. I, I got. I got. I got to open the Brandon, chat window. You cl you clearly haven't seen it because it's horrifying. And then. <laughs> oh. Yes, that's official, Brandon. Wonderful. Somehow that's worse than the original picture. Yeah. I don't know how that. Well, I know exactly how that's worse than the original picture, but we're not going to talk about. We're not going to say names, but the implications there. Yes. Okay. Um, so, so the t <laughs> today's creature was first seen in 1924. It was seen off the coast of South Africa 
It resembles a, a chimera of sorts, an elephant, whale, lobster, and polar bear, and it is still seen on occasion. Do mm. you have any guesses on what this may be? Mm. Um, Lindsay Lohan. Uh, close. Today right. we are going to talk about Trunko. Trunko? Trunko. Trunko. Oh my god, the name is actually Trunko. Yeah. Uh-huh. This is, uh... What? I was wait. A, I was a little bit short on word count, b- 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 but wait. I could not write a Trunko episode because... Brandon, what? Trunko. What? What? Yeah. This headline... This oh, headline, like literally yeah. the first thing I see when I go in, the headline, whales are slain by hairy monster. That yes. is my favorite sentence ever now. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, am, I am happy and I am now living my best life now that this information is in my brain. Yeah, this is what happens when you have to go to the dark parts of the internet to try to find something new and interesting instead of more like, oh, here's a thing that's very similar to this other thing that you read. So yeah. here's something very different to other things. Yeah, this this I will say this is a this is a a, a bit of a left turn. Yeah. Oh a yeah. A bit of a left turn. A bit of a left turn. It may very well be. On October 25th, 1924, off the coast of Margate, South Africa, located on the southeastern coast, locals saw an epic battle. It was first described in an article of London's Daily Mail on December uh, 27th of Brandon. the same year. Now you've completely discredited this whole story. It was in the Daily Mail. There's other news articles that cover it. There's, okay, uh, okay. uh, if you look at the timeline, well, I think I talked about this later. I, for, I forget. It's been a while since I wrote it. But, uh, Fair. the articles, uh, or after that, another article was written entitled Whale Slain by Harry Monster on March 27th, 1925 by the Charleroi Mail of Charleroi, Pennsylvania in the United oh. States. You can't trust people from Pennsylvania. You can't trust people from Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. That's, that, yeah, that's just fair. That's just a fact. I mean, the dude, what's his name? Uh, William Penn was the guy who just, who like founded Pennsylvania. Dude, yes. dude, co- Pen- the, the anachronism was is the fact that he like cut a line through the state of Pennsylvania because the Native Americans said he could have as much land as he could walk through in a day. Yeah, that Which and, is uh, shitty. Uh, Sylvania, I think, is like Dutch for forest, so I think it literally yes. translates to like Penn's forest. Penn's forest, yeah, yeah. yeah it's really, uh, really kind of a douchey thing. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> they said that, and also, um, in that period of time, and probably still, definitely still, um, white people be dicks, man. Oh. You're not wrong. Yeah. Um. Actually, and you know what? I know they're not going to be listening to this. Amish people, fucking assholes. Mm, like no, I no, can see like, it. like legitimately. Like if you look it up, they they've got. I've I've read stories about some like systemic abuse in Amish oh, culture. Yeah. I don't know much about that culture. I mean, they make decent furniture, but that doesn't mean that they're not uh, assholes. That's true. <laughs> I'm looking it up while you Google that. Hugh C. Balance, um, a South African farmer, was walking along the sea coast when he saw two killer whales battling against a strange sea monster that would use its tail to eject itself twenty feet out of the water. What? That's legit. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. Yeah, twenty feet's a that's, lot of feats. That's a lot of feats. A lot that's, of feats. That's a lot of feats. Yes. <laughs> he watched it through binoculars while the monster killed both whales and apparently exhausted floated ashore on its back, presumably to die. All right. I don't know if you've seen a killer. I, I, I've i seen Shamu. I have as it's well. Not, it's not in vogue anymore because of Blackfish and all that stuff, which, mm-hmm. you know what? Uh, let's be real. Fuxy world? I think, I think yeah. 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 Um, like, those animals are a little too intelligent to be just kept in... A small cage oh yeah yeah it's it's not fair to them yeah. although i will say that the vancouver aquarium is pretty legit because mm-hmm. they have a they have a a dolphin there that physically can't survive in the wild and okay. they gave it a huge tank yeah. that it lives in by itself which is kind of cool okay 
I enjoy watching. Have a, I, by himself, he should have a little buddy. Well, Why not get him a little buddy? She doesn't have a little buddy because th- they'd have to maim another dolphin. I mean, <laughs> friendship, fr- 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 friends forever. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Killer whales are legit. Oh, yeah. There's a like, reason why they're called killer whales. Well, that it, orca's technically the preferred term because killer whale is not fair to orcas. Because they are they are carnivorous, but that doesn't mean that they're bad. No. I mean... Hyenas are assholes, nasty, though. Some, hy- hyenas are assholes, yeah. I don't care what those, defama- those hyena I defamation saw leagues King. people say. I saw yeah. the Lion King. Yeah. You know what? Lion King? D- documentary. Yeah. Hyenas are assholes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They laugh at you. And one of them gets super high all the time. It's really, yeah, really, it, it gets in the way of things. Yeah. He gets way too high. They uh, So after seeing this battle through his binoculars and seeing this creature drift ashore, he had an appointment, so he left. But that, he did have... You know, you know what? Actually, yeah. that's believable to me. Is it? Kinda. I've been that way. I've lived that life. Okay. <laughs> I've been some. I've been like, that's super cool. Oh shit! I gotta be there in thirty minutes. It yeah. takes forty minutes to get there. <laughs> that's a normal occurrence in John's life. Okay. Uh, he did, however, return the next day to measure the strange creature and found that it was forty-seven feet long, with a ten-foot-long tail that was two feet wide, and rather than a head, it had a long trunk that was fourteen inches in diameter and five feet long. The end resembling a pig's snout. Okay, I'm going to just stop you there. Okay. So, first of all, the, the first thing that jumps out at me is, how do you, how, where does the tail begin on an animal like this? Because I'm seeing a picture, a red, representation of this animal, right? Yes. It's a furry whale, basically. As yeah, the, that's, like that's, a furry whale with a trunk, kind of is how and it a, And a weird tail. That mm-hmm. That's that's all I'm going to say right now, right? So, the, the fact of the matter is, there's not a clear point on a whale that you say, this is the tail now. Uh, I see. Like, how long is a snake's tail? Like, yeah, is, is how that, long is how, a snake's how, tail? How it's like, yeah. like, how do you know where the, the snake's tail begins? You don't. You're lying. It's the snake's body. So I, don't I like know. snakes because they're all neck. Gross. Their tail's <laughs> only an inch long. They're all neck. <laughs> Gross. I don't know why, but that's really gross. I imagine the tail starts at at, at the butthole, I guess, if 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 I was going to guess. But that doesn't make sense. Why not? Think of most other creatures. No. Where's the tail? Uh, Where's the tail? Mammals. Those By are the mammals. Bee-hole. By the beehole. I don't even know if I... So the other thing, too, is, like, even on a lizard, I don't know if I exactly know where the tail started, like, to measure from. By the butt. I'm not going to lie. Starts at the butt. Find the hole, Do measure lizards- back. Do lizards have butts? Lizards or do they have like have a cloaca? Find, find the, just find the hole back there and measure it backwards. Everything's got a hole. Everything's got a hole. Except that one alien. <laughs> except his life is a living hell. Everything he has just a gets hole. larger except, and larger. Except Jeremy, poor Jeremy. It's awful. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Can crazy. you imagine just carrying around all that like Jeremy does? Oh. He's got a he's got a weight. I gotta say, he's got a weight. <laughs> he does. He's got no. He's got to pop it like a pimple. It's so. Oh. Oh yeah. no. Yeah. No, that's awful. That's get the that, worst. Get that out of your head now. I'm not. That's stuck. I I kind of hate you right now for that. <laughs> the creature's body was entirely covered in white snow, or sorry, snow white hair that was ten inches long. And the creature was beached for a total of 10 days. Okay, I want to stop you for a second. Okay. I want to stop you again. Because it's if it's been beached for 10 days, it is 1924, Brandon. Mm-hmm. Kodak exists at this point. Did Kodak exist? Oh, you know, yeah, there, there's it picture, definitely I, does. I included photographs. There's there's photographs of the actual thing. Okay, yeah, because Kodak, Kodak came into existence in, 19, in 1888 in Rochester, New York. Okay. Um, so wait, nineteen eight. This was nineteen twenty something. Nineteen twenty two. Kodak has been around since eighteen eighty eight. Oh, eighteen. I think said nineteen eighty eight. Sorry. Yes. Um, uh, yeah. So their film. But when did their film start? Um, 
Ba, 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 ba. Uh, 19, by 1900, they had a camera. Already. Okay. So there's... Okay, you said there's pictures, though. There, so there, I'll, there's I'll pictures. wait. I'll okay. wait. But I just want to say, if there were no pictures, that would be bullshit. No, there's pictures. Like, literally days. on the next page, okay. there's pictures. Uh, the trunk is said to have been attached directly to the creature's torso with no apparent head. All right. The two articles differ slightly. The original claims that the whale successfully killed the creature, while the latter claims that the creature won. Both that, agree it was beached for 10 days. That's kind of important to me, because that yeah. tells me what the fighting power of this creature is. Oh, yeah. What's, you know what? What's, I, I what's its, what are the bars like on the back of its Transformers box? I need its bio. I yeah. need its stats. I need its technical stats. I need to know what its int level is. I need to know yeah. what its stir is. You know what? I, I need, you know what I need? I need an actual trading card, and I don't have it for the joke. I, I need an actual trading card for this thing, because I have mm. actual trade. Oh, it's right here. Uh, Let's see. <clears throat> Let's see, because I want to compare it to a Transformer, right? Yeah. So, like, for example, um, let's see. Decepticon Overlord, for example, his strength rating, which is represented by a, a, a muscle, like mm. a guy making a muscle, a bicep, yeah. uh, is a 10. His speed is an 8. His brain with cogs in it. Uh, is a nine, and his fire blast is ten. With when he has dreadnought, his headmaster attached, it's twenty. That's important. I imagine the strength of this creature is very high because of how it can shoot itself twenty feet out of the water. That you're gonna need some strength. Um, I, I, later, they I describe guess. its battle technique. I think that its technique is is also probably rather high, but its intelligence, I don't think, too high. Hmm. Is there any chance of us getting a like uh, one of those one of those circles that has the little points on it? Like, oh yeah, the, yeah. the Pokemon. Like, what's your cool? What's your beauty? What's your kind of stat uh, circle? I mean, that's not the one I would think of, but yeah, that's 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 yeah. the same concept. The one I'm thinking of in particular is the one that's on the Japanese uh, Jetstorm, whose name I don't remember. Okay, uh, the creature itself was dubbed Trunko. Originally named the Margate Monster by a British cryptozoologist Carl Schuker in his 1996 book *The Unexplained*. Now I'm just looking at Transformers cards. I'm sorry. That's fair. This is, this is I, just I, happening because I, I, like, I have this bat. I have this this book just filled to the brim with like this beautiful Titans Return artwork and like I got grotesque here who's gorgeous. I'll put it away. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Now, one thing I would like to point out is that mentioned in several articles is that at no point in time during these 10 days does any scientist take interest and decide to check out this amazing creature for themselves. Well, that's because scientists were outlawed in uh, in South Africa for that period, that 10-day that, that period. The, Only yeah, that for, 10 days. They, they were just on strike for exactly those 10 days, and yeah, that was no, it. No, they, they were all out on conference, every yeah. single scientist in the yeah. country. They had a Skype call. They couldn't. They couldn't. Just, they couldn't make they it. They just couldn't. They couldn't yeah. make it. They had prior commitments. According to Schuker, due to the smell of the creature rotting for days, locals eventually brought a team of thirty-two oxen over to remove the corpse. Unfortunately, this thing was too heavy to move, and they gave up uh, moving the stink monster. What? Uh, oh. Okay. This. This to me. This is just this just sounds like nonsense, doesn't it? Because like, there's a lot of this that I would just be like, there would be pictures of that, the oxen trying to of pull the, the thing away. There are yeah. there are creatures of the of the original uh, 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 creature. Um, no, but like there'd be pictures of them trying to pull the oxen away. Is what I'm trying to say. Like, oh, uh, I got you. Uh, like, yeah. I feel like that would be the way it is, but mm. I, I, you know, I don't know. Mm. I don't know. I'm dumb, so who knows? Who knows? Uh, on the tenth day, the tide came in, and according to different sources, either swept the body away or the creature became conscious again and gently swam off into the sunset. So here's what I'm going to say about that: if the if the creature was smelling as bad as they said, it definitely did gently swim off into the sunset. Yeah, <laughs> that shit just floated. It's just stink corpse into the middle of the ocean. Yeah, that's that's what happened there. It did not it did not gently swim yeah. off into that, that good night. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh this was the last time Trunko was seen until Monday, September sixth, twenty ten, when Carl Schuker made a blog post. What? Mm-hmm. That's the most that's the most uh uh 
correct way to announce something like that i should yeah. say yeah, yeah um i had i have a blog that i haven't posted to in five years and i posted all my most important stuff on that blog like things no one cared about <laughs> <laughs> so like any blog any blog yeah <clears throat> so yesterday german correspondent Marcus Hemmler emailed me with some... This is, again, from his blog. He, uh, this isn't me saying that he uh, a shooter said this. Um, Although, I, I, I want to just note, we are kind of shit-talking a blog when we have a podcast. Yeah, that's true. We, 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 it's kind of, the, it's kind of the, the pot calling the kettle black a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my neighbor is from a different country and i also work with him and he yep. doesn't english is in his first language he doesn't yeah, qu yeah. quite get turns of phrase and it's pretty great um because the other week someone said something and then he came up to me and he goes man his his cattle are black right and i was like i know what you're trying to say his kettle are black his his cattle his cattle, cattle are black yeah i love it and that's the new way i'm gonna it's, say the pot is calling it's the pretty kettle fantastic black. His um, cattle are black is my new – that's my new phrase. Yeah. We, Man, uh, his cattle are black. We were going to carpool to get uh, – just go for, like, Chinese food or something to get lunch. And yeah, yeah. Uh, we're all walking to the car, and he just runs towards the car, and he's like, I'm bringing a shotgun. And we're like, we know what you mean. Don't say that. We usually don't correct you unless you ask for it. Uh, but this one in particular, here's – Maybe the, not. Right, just, this is one you can't just yell at, like, the mall when you're trying to, like, go <laughs> – they... I'm carrying a shotgun. Yeah, yeah. Um... <laughs> I, you know, it's one of those things where it's like he already speaks another language better than I'll probably ever speak another language. Oh yeah. So like, I'm not gonna knock him for that, but it's so fun. It's yeah. so fun. Like idioms are the most fun thing for me. Yeah. Because they don't translate. Yeah. And the idioms like... really don't. They don't, they, so I understand really why it's don't. hard to get those. They're totally cultural. Yeah. Um, so he said, Yesterday, a German correspondent, Marcus Hemmler, emailed me with some remarkable news. He had discovered a website containing an allegedly, allegedly <laughs> genuine photograph of Trunko. Moreover, <laughs> the photograph had been snapped by none other than M Mr. A.C. Jones of Johannesburg, the correspondent and photographer, for an article on this uh, entity that had been published in the Rand Daily Mail, also the Worldwide uh, Magazine, way back in July 1925, thus providing a promising air of authenticity to the image. But wouldn't it have been published in the magazine? Uh, I don't know. But it seems like it would have been published in the... the okay. okay. Yeah. Oh. And um, it's a decent quality image, given the time period. It shows a guy poking a blob with a stick. Yeah, that's literally. I it, it honestly just looks like a mound of sand. Yeah, it does. Or like, like I can quick picture it being like a whale covered in fur, sort of, because it's big and and kind of furry looking. I honestly, if somebody put a gun to my head and said identify that, I whale with fur would not be the first thing I guessed. No, yeah, me neither. I'm not really sure what I would guess, but uh, it looks like a big kind of it maybe just, furry thing. It looks like sand to me. It, it looks like a different color sand. It looks like a lighter colored sand than the sand that he's standing on. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Or or actually, you know what I would think it was? If I was looking at this, I would think it was a wave crashing. Yeah, it looks kind of like water breaking. Yeah, it looks like a water break. Yeah. I don't know. That That's that's pushing it, but okay, cool. Okay. So this exists. Yeah, the, 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 yeah the, a picture is extant. Authenticity unknown. Um. Darren Naish, a vertebrate paleontologist from the University of Southampton uh, in the UK, gave this explanation for Trunko in his book, Hunting Monsters, Cryptozoology, and the Reality Behind the Myths. Uh, the photos showed that it was a rotting carcass of a large vertebrate, most likely a whale. The idea that this is really the body of a white-furred trunked sea monster stems from the uh, naivety about the appearance of rotting animal carcasses. Yeah, I, I'm now thinking of the Montauk monster. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> or the blob, or a insert insert thing found on a beach that was de decomposed here. Yeah. Uh, oh, that poor raccoon. That poor raccoon. <laughs> That's all the Montauk monster was. I don't think we're. I don't think we'll ever do an episode on it because it's literally just a raccoon. Yeah, I mean, like, we if could you look for people who don't know the context, but it won't be a long one. 
it wouldn't be a long one. It would be one of those super short ones that you did a while back that I haven't, don't think I've released any of recently. Uh, Remember those like super tiny ones, like the one about the, uh, yeah, uh, the the carnival. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It I would be one of those be, in a minute. It it'd probably be shorter than that, to be totally honest. Yeah, there's a thing people thought it was a thing. Turns out it was a raccoon. Yep. Like, you could look at a picture of it and look at a picture of a raccoon. You can just like kind of, you can cross your eyes and see it. Yeah, like one of those uh, magic eye puzzles. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he continues that the photos are somewhat ambiguous, but the enormous bulk of the carcass and the large amount of what looks like frayed, badly decayed collagen from the presence of what seems to be a mostly obscured internal skeletal framework suggests that this is another globster, which is a rotting mass of whale tissue found on beaches. Have I feel like we've mentioned globsters on this podcast. We've before. probably mentioned them before. They're a thing that explains a, a number of different things. It's also a really, really good, like... It's a fun word. It's a fun word. Yeah. A globster. I love that. Yes. I, uh, I love the fact that we live in a reality in which globster is a thing. Yes. It's a good reality. Or a terrifying one. Well, Who knows? It's, 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 a terrible, it's a terrifying reality where one thing happens to be fun. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Max Hawthorne wrote an article called Trunko Bunko that makes some good points for the creature being a globster, but goes into some detail that I liked. Uh, he stated that Trunko was not a sea monster. It was a male whale of some kind, probably a right whale, possibly even a white one. I want to I wanna meet a wrong whale. The... I did. I'm going to stop slow clapping because I just looked at uh, the audio spiking. So I'm going to yeah. stop, but slow clap. Um, yeah, that was a good joke. I was not a completely obvious joke. That was not a dad joke at all. It wasn't. No, it totally no, wasn't a dad it joke. It wasn't. Uh, it's a known fact that whale car carcasses often turn. I'd like to see a, a whale caucus, just all of them getting together and trying to vote. Oh my <laughs> gosh. That would be great. Yeah. <laughs> And then they get the numbers wrong still. Yeah. <laughs> uh, whale carcasses often turn white as they rot and the skin comes off. But it's irrelevant in this case. Witnesses who described Tronco as being white like a polar bear watched as the creature actively fought a pair of killer whales. White and partially white right whales uh, are rare, but do happen. Moreover, a white whale would make an inviting target for orcas as it would stand invitingly out in the first place and be easier to track when it attempted to flee uh yeah, in terms of the creature's supposed trunk this was simply the b the bull whale's exposed organ my theory his, on this wait, is supported his... by the reported examination of the car carcass uh which stated oh. <laughs> that the tapering trunk was attached directly to the torso of the animal <sighs> it was a whale dick i like this guy like there's pictures it was a whale dick it was a whale that got fucked up in a fight, and the it was a, it was a whale it. dick. But he enjoyed it. But he enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. He may have died, but he enjoyed his last moments in life. Yeah. That's right. Trunko's head was really his penis. Uh, I was trying to think about Trunko's physical makeup, and this would uh, could be a possible explanation. <laughs> oh, uh, I feel so bad about laughing about that, but man. There, there's some pictures, and, and, and like, if in your head you can't make it out, and if you see the pictures, you're like, oh, yeah, I can totally see that. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> That's just a floppy old whale penis. Floppy old whale penis. Oh, it's floppy. Uh, and while this may describe one feature on Trunko, he does disagree with the uh, Globster assertion. Uh, he says that in quotes, I disagree with any claims that this monster was actually a Globster. First off, orcas aren't going to play with a foul-smelling multi-ton glob of uh, putrescence for three hours, uh, which is the length of the documented battle. If they had such tendencies, we'd see them appropriating drifting whale remains from great whites. We don't. In addition, the fight uh, was witnessed over the course of the battle. Trunko repeatedly used his lobster-like tail, <laughs> i.e. flukes, to fight the killer whales. Lengthy battles between orcas and larger uh, 
Cetaceans. What? Cetaceans. Cetaceans. Yeah, cetaceans. There's cetaceans. There's cetaceous okay. creatures. They're, uh, you know why I know that? Because you know there's that? a... I'm going to tell you why Moby Dick is the worst book in American literature history. And in a word, cetology. There is a chapter in that book that yeah. is literally 30 pages of him just talking about the different types of whales. <laughs> it has nothing... It has literally nothing to do with the hunt for Moby Dick... It's nothing. It's literally just talking about whales. It's fantastic, and I hate that book. And I made a mistake because when I was in ninth grade English, we had uh-huh. to read a book. Oh, like, and you chose over the Moby summer. Dick. Yeah, and I chose Moby Dick because I was like, "Oh, Moby Dick! I remember that from the Page Master, the yeah. the hit movie with uh, uh, what's his name? Was that Macaulay Culkin? I don't think I've ever seen that movie. Yeah, it was Macaulay Culkin and uh, the guy who played Doc Brown. Um, why can't I remember people's names? <laughs> Christopher uh, it was Maca- Lloyd. Christopher Lloyd, yeah. It had Christopher Lloyd as like a librarian who was also a wizard. And I want... No, it wasn't the Page Master. I'm looking it up. You you should watch it. It's really good. Okay. I enjoyed it. It was... What is the name of this kid? I know this kid. I recognize this kid's face. You'll recognize it too if I send it to you. I don't think it's Macaulay Culkin. What's that kid's name? Which What's kid? What's that kid's name? The, the picture. I sent you a picture. St- That's oh, Macaulay, Macaulay Culkin. Culkin. That is okay. Macaulay Culkin. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So Macaulay Culkin, Christopher Lloyd was in it. Wookie mm-hmm. Goldberg was one of the books. Patrick Stewart was one of the books, I think. Uh, Leonard Nimoy was in it? I didn't Leonard know that. Leonard Nimoy, okay. Shoot. Okay, wait a second. Uh, oh, what? What? Patrick Stewart was the adventure book? <laughs> oh, Frank Welker was in it too? What His is this? His mind is blown. Oh, yeah. oh, oh God. Okay, so... um, It was a really good book. It was yeah. a live-action story that... Basically, Macaulay Culkin, uh, he went to he was driving riding his bike home from somewhere I think, and he ends up in a library. Uh, yeah, he's as a pessimistic. Listen, listen to the plot synopsis on Wikipedia. A okay. pessimistic ten year old Richard Tyler lives life based on statistics and fears everything. <laughs> his exacerbated <laughs> parents have tried multiple ways to build up his courage to little success. Richard is sent to buy a bag of nails for building a treehouse. However, Richard gets caught in a harsh thunderstorm and takes shelter in a library. He meets Mr. Dewey, who's played by Christopher Lloyd, an eccentric librarian who insists that he ne- he is in need of special books and gives him a library card, despite Richard's protests. Searching for a phone, Richard finds a large rotunda painted like many famous literary characters. He slips on water dripping from his coat and falls over, knocking himself out. Richard awakens to find the rotunda art melting, <laughs> which washes over him and the library, turning them into illustrations. The remainder of the movie is a cartoon. Wait. What year did this come out? Please tell me it's the 80s. It's uh 94. No, that's too yes. late for some of this kind of stuff to be going on. Yes. it. It's phenomenal. Like, it goes through literature. Um, there's a section. Someone had to make an elevator pitch of that. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde appear. Captain Ahab appears. Long John Silver. Uh, Tom Morgan. I think there was a Huckleberry Finn section, but I can't remember. Um, Queen of Hearts was there. It was wild. I love that movie. I watched that movie a lot as a kid. That's ridiculous. Okay. Yeah. I also had it on DVD for a while, and I think I gave it to my niece and nephew. Okay. Because, like, the odds of me watching that again are so low that it's not really mm. not really worth it. Yeah, mm. no, and now I remember Macaulay Culkin played the Page Master game <laughs> oh, on, like, okay. Angry Video Game Nerd yeah. or something. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. So lengthy battles between orcas and larger cetaceans are well documented and often last hours as they wear down and exhaust their quarry. Moreover, baleen whales and often sperm whales commonly use their tails as defense against killer whales. These facts indicate that Trunko was a living creature, not a drifting mass of rotting blubber. I'll the idea that. that Trunko's trunk was simply 
a rib are illogical. So I guess other people were saying his trunk was a rib. Uh, loose ribs don't stay attached to slabs of decaying fat, especially when slammed repeatedly and tossed 20 feet in the air by killer whales. Again, for three hours. Witnesses saw the trunk and measured it. I am sure they would know a curved protruding piece of bone if they saw one, but not <laughs> a big old ding dong. Uh, big old ding dong. Big old ding dong. Instead, ding it was old. described as the uh, elephantine, which was undoubtedly the unfortunate whale's exposed penis. Oh, that poor whale. Of Male- all the in- injustices. Yeah. Male whales often expose their organs when around females, sometimes in groups, and their large uh, genitalia up to 15 oh, feet in the case of blue whales. They're just like humans. They're just like humans. They're just <laughs> been like us. They've reportedly been mistaken uh, for everything from sea, serpent, sea serpents to giant squid battling the same whale. If not, if that's not enough for you, take a look at this head-on picture that was taken of Tronco's carcass. It bears remarkable similarity to that of a beached right whale, especially when viewed head-on. Yeah, it does, but I also want to say... I feel like everyone's been in a battle with their own penis, so I can understand that. Listen, uh... <laughs> yeah. It's it's kind of... It's kind of the... the, the I've been fighting that guy man. since puberty. Yeah, it, it's it's being a human. Sometimes it comes a to human blows. Male. Oh, no. <laughs> I'd say I'd say it frequently comes to blows for men. Yeah. Frequently. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, we are adults. I just, I just wish, I just wish my, my. Encounter you can't my... pause after we said that. You can say, "I wish that my," and the long pause after those jokes. I wish my encounters were uh, described as a sperm whale fighting a giant squid, though. Yeah. <laughs> do you? Um, I'm not sure, actually. Yeah, no, I do. I do. I'll, I'll own it. I'll okay. own it. I'll, I'll own that. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, Max did think the unedited version of the Trunko Wiki, uh, which, as it turns out, is a snapshot in time of when he edited the Trunko Wiki and wrote, uh, went on a rant about globsters versus carcasses battle of course. With, with someone on the radio who previously sided with Shuker and then conceded to Max. Um, and I did provide a link to the, like, the original Wiki versus his, and his unedited version and the unedited version is twice as long and is just him bragging about himself winning an argument on the radio oh i've hit that a few times yeah uh there was an extreme amount of debate online what it could be and i'm no expert but i would say that the globster is a carcass uh and that it would suggest that the only difference is the state of decay the creature is in attached is a copy of several photos of trunko uh i do not know how soon after uh, this creature's death the pictures were taken, but the first photo is consistent with the tissue decay of a globster that is uh, connective yeah. tissue that has broken down enough to resemble fur and uh, the latter with the carcass. Um, mm-hmm. My opinion is that they were taken at different points in time uh, of the same creature or at different sections of the body based on their composition. Uh, based on their composition may decay differently over different Similar periods of time. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's kind like, of the way the body decays. It's things not things decay at different rates based on what the stuff's made out of. Yeah, like fat, fat, fat content, salt, yeah. col- sodium col- content. You know, mm-hmm. uh, literally, literally, like a hundred things, a million yeah. things could contribute to how fast something decays. Yeah. Um. That, and I also attached a more recent image of a globster that. Uh, if perhaps taken sooner, would bear a very high degree of similarity to Trunko. Yeah, like it does it, look an, it looks very furry. Yeah, it's all furry. There's clearly a trunky bit mm-hmm. attaches directly to the torso, like what you could guess was a torso if you saw this thing just roaming around on the beach. So that's how they fit. Well, now now there's an important an important factor in the length of his uh his trunk. Yeah. Because if he was only if it was only five feet long, Trunko wasn't having Trunko is not exactly well endowed. Well, for a whale. For a whale. Maybe maybe he was just got, just got a little. Maybe the water was cold, John. You know how yeah. cold that water was. 
I don't know. I mean, I feel like the water temperature around South Africa is decent. Africa water temperature. Well, compared co compared to what though? <laughs> I'm looking. Uh, okay. 66 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Ooh, that's actually pretty nice. That's pretty that's balmy. Pretty nice. Map of current water temp. Oh yeah, no, it's pretty balmy. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, actually okay. It's actually a, cooler. I, it, it 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 trends cooler than other portions. Does it? Does it? Well, he said balmy. Balmy means cooler, right? No, balmy means like warm, like like tropical. Let I'm me Google. Sure. Have I been using this word wrong for a while? Have you been using balmy for cold? Pleasantly warm. I have been using it for cold. Well, Brandon, you have now learned something. Balmy is balmy for me is like sixty five degrees, which is about the water temperature right now. Okay. And if you're talking Celsius, it's not 65 degrees Celsius, you would die. Yeah, uh, yeah of course. You. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, we're kind of weird in the fact that we use Fahrenheit, aren't we? I don't use Fahrenheit. You don't use Fahrenheit? You use Celsius? Yeah. How hot well, is it outside right now? There's, well, let, let me rephrase that. So... I do a lot of stuff that involves temperature at work, and that's how I most frequently talk about the temperature, which is at work. Oh, so, well, yeah. The... So right I in. most commonly, when I talk about temperature with people, it's it's in a work environment, and we use Celsius. Okay, that's if, fair. If someone asks me what the weather is, I tell it in Fahrenheit. I'm not some weirdo. God damn it, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> You're not it's wrong. True. Like it sounds like what do you what what system do you how do you tell the temperature? Like I most commonly for me it's in Celsius. Yeah, I mean actually for when it comes to computer temps, I'm usually talking Celsius too. Yeah. Or Kelvin. Kelvin? What the fuck? Get out of here. <laughs> for no, computer temps. If you're talking about like temperature of chips on a board, you're you're gonna be talking Celsius because it's usually like minus forty to to plus one twenty five. Kelvin, like in Celsius. Kel I have never used Kelvin. <laughs> um, oh, you're on you're on them fancy shits though. You know what? You know what's no? Nah, they don't use Kelvin. I was just joking. Okay. The the main reason I wanted to say Kelvin was because I wanted to talk about Mac Warrior. Um, Go on. Be because when is there I was a new a one coming out? Uh, I don't think there's a new one coming out. Oh, I'm thinking Mech Assault. I would love a new Mech Assault. Uh. Dude, I want to. I want someone to make a Mech Assault game so bad, like that. I almost thought of making a Mech Assault game for myself. I would legit break out my Hotas setup again. Oh, I love Mech Assault. Um, dude, Mech Assault was so good, and it came free with Xbox Live. It was so good. I actually uh, owned a physical copy. I had it. I had a physical copy too, but it came with Xbox Live, and it was the best. There was also a Mech Assault 2 Lone Wolves, which is really mm -hmm. cool because there was a there was a mechanic where you could hijack other people's mechs. Like, you could eject out into, like, a uh, elemental-style suit. That is amazing. It was really cool, but no one played it. You know what? There's, up until a couple of years ago, my Nintendo 64 actually worked, and then something, I tried swapping out power supplies. I still can't get it to play right with my TV. But I, used, I got pretty far into Mario 64 when that happened. And then before that, I used to have people over, like uh, my sister, uh, and um, we'd play Battle Tanks. I played that with you, remember? Yes. I was there. Yeah. I was one of the people. You're one of the people. I was one of the people. Yeah. I did terrible great. in that game. Everyone did terrible at the game. Because it was like, literally, I don't know how it worked in the past, but when you I had played... one joystick, old... and somehow yeah. you had to turn your turret separate from the tank and still drive with a camera that's set like well the, the thing that gets me about old games like old multiplayer games is it's like i play them now and i'm just like how yeah how did i used to play these because i like i literally can't see anything yeah that's the worst part about it is it's like when i played a game like this when i was a child uh, I knew m way more, and I don't know what my brain was yeah. doing. Well, they also have, compared to modern games, uh, an extremely reduced field of view. Or if yeah. I play a game now, I if it's not already set, I set it to like 118, 120. For I field do of 120. View. And um, in those old games, I don't, 
I don't even know what they were, they were set to, but they were definitely not that. It was not that at all. Uh, all right. Um, <laughs> I'm just I'm just dragging out. We're we're hitting an hour now. There we go. Okay. <laughs> we'll be. <laughs> if nothing else, we're honest. Yeah, I don't lie. Well, I do lie, but it's usually white lies. Everything about, you say like, is you know, lie. Anytime, anytime, like a, a a boss asks me, so how are things going? Okay. Oh, that's I my explicitly most, don't do that. That's my most common white lie. So, how are things going? Okay. And meanwhile, in my head, I'm literally screaming about uh, how much I hate certain coworkers. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm just honest via email, so I have that documented because they like track like CPI, SPI, like the the cost of everything, yeah. and how like project schedule and all that. So this way, if anything ever happens with the project, because they'll you'll get in serious trouble if something isn't going how you said it was going. I'll just be like, oh, here's all here's all these emails. Not my not, yeah. Not, it, you, it's not the same for me. You should not the same for me. It'll it'll go from why didn't I do something to why didn't you provide me the resources. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, in, in a job like yours, I can see that mattering more. But in my job, they don't really even understand how Agile works. <laughs> and they super don't understand how GitHub works. I'm having a good time. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so always, if you enjoyed this podcast, our website is com. Instagram is at CryptopediaCast. Twitter is also at CryptopediaCast. You can email us at CryptopediaCast at gmail.com or us at CryptopediaCast.com. We do have a Patreon. We do not do ads. Um, I don't like ads. Ads be gross. We did I, used I, to do ads, but they were fake. They were all fake, except Vague Loves. That was real. Vague Loves was very real. Yeah, it was. they actually got really aggressive with us towards yeah. the end. We had to we had to end that that partnership. I think that's about when we made the Patreon. <laughs> you know, you might. You're, you're, I don't think you're wrong. <laughs> I think it actually was. <laughs> Just happens to be coincidental. <laughs> um. So uh, there's three tiers. There's uh, what is it? Hoop Snake, Hodag, and Jackalope. Yes. Hoop Snakes get nothing but our thanks. Hodags get episode uh, scripts. And jackalopes get mentioned on the podcast. And we have two recurring jackalopes who have been with us for, I think both of them for, for a long, over a year for now. Most I think of the, both, over a year, definitely, yeah. I, I think both of them are at a year at least. I know Clay is. Yeah. Uh, but Clay Sinclair and Marty Von Party. Yes. I'm working on something to give you guys because you've been with us for a year. I'm not, I don't know when it's going to be done. <laughs> a full size Bigfoot exoskeleton it's gonna be my death mask <laughs> oh oh yeah. that got dark yeah yeah uh if you enjoyed the podcast uh rate review subscribe if you have any monster requests or stories be sure to send them in yes i know clay you want us to do the wendigo one of these days i don't know when we're gonna do it but we'll do it eventually did we not do the wendigo already we did the oh, no, skinwalkers yes yeah, skinwalkers skin yeah. yeah all right when it goes on my see. list when it goes on my list i would love to find somebody who is actually from a culture that has the wendigo myth mm -hmm. yeah and talk to them about it from their perspective that's but what I they don't say in pennsylvania when you when you ghost uh when you just disappear from a party and they're trying to figure out at what time you left when like, you go yeah when do, what like where, where where's john when to go We're, we're, we're kind of ripping on Pennsylvania a lot this episode. Yeah. And with the bad, bad dad jokes. Yeah. This is a weird episode. Yeah. Uh, you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon. And to be clear, because it's been spelled wrong by people taking my orders at places, it's B R A N D O N. Not the evil one with the E-N or the A-N. Brandon. Yeah. Brandon. They're out there, and they're monsters. Well, it's not them that's the monster. It's their parents that are monsters. No, they're monsters. They're monsters? They're monsters. <sighs> okay. Uh, I'm available on Instagram. at Name one good Chad. 
fair. I'll give you that. But I feel like they're not the reason they're the bad Chad. Name a Becky who hasn't asked to see a manager. <sighs> we're, 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 we're laying down some harsh, yeah. harsh flow against people today. Name a crystal that doesn't put a heart on her name even though there's no I in it. Okay, yeah, that's that's fair. There's going to be a heart in a name, a name like Crystal. Yeah. That's a fact. They're also going to be blue, and they're going to be Fox women. Uh, if I've learned anything for video games. Okay. <laughs> Crystal's the name of Fox's kind of girlfriend from F- Star Fox Adventures. Yes. Yeah. I never finished that game. That game's fucking hard. Oh, I believe it. There's, there's a section in that game where you have to, like, mash on the uh, A button because you have to fight like a dinosaur and it's like i never was able to beat it and then i was just like i'm done i quit i've only ever played the first star fox on the 64 it's actually the second star fox brand oh i've only ever played the second star fox on the 64 actually it's technically the third star fox actually i've never played anything but the third star fox on the 64 so star fox one was on the snes and it was like literally just to show that the snes could do some form of 3d graphics okay star fox 2 was on the SNES as well, and it was a 3D game, but they canceled it because the N64 was coming out, and they didn't want to have the market muddied oh. by two by a 3D game on an old console because the whole yeah. gimmick of the N64 was 3D. Yeah. Star Fox 64 came out on the N64. Then Star Fox died for a while. Okay. And then Star Fox Adventures came out <laughs> on, on the GameCube. Oh, okay. And then, then there's been a smattering of Star Fox games since then. I just don't... I, I don't really pay enough attention to Star Fox to really remember, but I think there's been like, I want to say like five games since then. I'm looking it up. I have I have a degree in games, so I should know these things. That's not true at all. Uh, yeah, I, just, I don't one, think that's part of the two, degree. It's just memorizing three. when Star Foxes came out. Uh, there have been three Star Fox games since um, uh, Star Fox Adventures, and there was a cool game called Starlink, which was a Toys to Life game. Um, that's actually really fun. Yeah. Uh, I bought it and I bought the DLC version. It was actually very fun. It had like optional toy to life things, but you could just buy DLC and let you, you like switch everything in automatically. Yeah. Um, but there was a Star Fox one on the Nintendo switch version. You could play Star Fox (laughs) and it was basically another Star Fox game and it was great. Yeah. Um, anywho. (laughs) (laughs) what's wrong with me (laughs) many many things yes many 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 things yeah yeah uh on instagram i'm (laughs) on instagram i'm mute 2057 i post a lot of toy pictures that's really all it is at this point sometimes cats i don't know whatever on twitter i'm at jf dunham my website is johndunhamgames.com, and my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Additionally, I have a YouTube show that I haven't updated in probably by the time this comes out, two weeks, um, called Toy Office. I'm working on stuff on it, but I had a bad, I had a bunch of missteps, so oh yeah, I needed to take a break. Yeah, what's well, it toy turns, reviews? It's good toy br- reviews. You, br- br- I see you change the format up sometimes too. I do. I've been working on that. Um, yeah. It turns out, Brandon, mm-hmm. uh, trying to film yourself in public while looking for toys is not fun. And it, in fact, yeah. causes really serious anxiety in me. Yeah, you have Partic- to have no shame to be able to do that. Yeah, particularly before the day before the Super Bowl when the mall was so crowded oh. that I had no idea what was going on. I there's There's a picture on my Instagram of me at the start of the journey where I look very vibrant and happy and at the end of the journey where i look like i'm dying yeah yeah <laughs> so i saw so, it. that's what all the all the squares yeah, yeah 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 you can see you can see my descent into i can't deal with this anymore i have done a terrible thing to myself why have i done this to myself oh my yeah. god i'm recording myself in public i look like an insane person <laughs> yeah uh <laughs> um I'm just picturing you going through that process in my head. Um, or, it's not hard. It's not hard to picture if you know me. Yeah. I, I actually could picture you going through the process as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, our art 
was done by Tom Hill. You can find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are so far past the point of weird, I don't even know why you're still listening. I change it up every week. I don't know. That was a bizarre story. And I love the fact that the the uh whatchamacallit, the Mr. um Mr. Jenkins or whatever from Scooby Doo is the whale's penis. It's just a penis. It's just a penis.